Good morning. Welcome to Image Church, guys. We ask that you stand to your feet this morning. So glad to have you here. Let's bless the Lord this morning. Amen. Come on now. Let's bless his holy name. Everybody clap your hands. Hey.
Happy Sunday, church. Happy Sunday, church. I know it's early. Yeah, we've made it to the second Sunday of 2024. That's crazy to me. Hi, my name is Andonia. I get the honor and privilege of welcoming you to Image Church. Um, if this is your first time here, our mission is to, our vision is to grow the family of God by making disciples and building families. Um, and the seat in front of you is a connection card. If this is your first time joining us, we invite you to fill it out and place it in the two black boxes in the foyer. This morning, Pastor put um, some promises of God from the YouVersion devotion in the Dream Team group me. And the funny thing is I had already pulled one for today's prayer. And then when I was listening through the first service after the prayer, the last song that they sing is in line with the scripture. God makes no mistakes. So I want to share that with you today. Um, the scripture comes from Psalm 46 and 1. And it says, God is your refuge and strength, your help in times of need. How many people know when you start fasting, you find out what your weaknesses are? In the Dream Team group me, I was tickled because people started talking about how they were working on the Daniel fast and then free food started appearing at work. And it was not Daniel fast friendly. It was pizza and donuts and chocolate and sugar. And when you were pulling away from that which you would normally gravitate to, I just wanted to remind you that the benefit of being closer to God and in getting more of him will always outweigh the sugar, the sweets, the pizza, all of the things that we would normally run to. And even if your good thing is healthy food, he is the sustainer. And sometimes when you're going through heaviness, you forget just how good God is. And you are reminded because maybe you don't have a job, but you don't lack anything. Maybe there is sickness around you, but God is a healer. Maybe you know someone who needs a lawyer and he is that counsel. In prayer, we remember that we can give all of our burdens to our burden bearer. And so as I often do, I invite you to get in whatever posture of prayer is good for you to commune with your father. If it's sitting, standing, if it's coming to the altar, I might be the one on the mic, but this is your opportunity to talk to him. This is your opportunity to lay the, the heaviness before him. And even if it's not, this is your opportunity to give God what he is due. Because every good and perfect thing comes from God our Father. In the Aramaic and the Hebrew, Father is translated to Abba. And when you call God Abba Father, it's a different level of relationship. How many of you have children? When your children ask you for something, they're asking because they believe you can provide it. Do you really believe that God, your father, can provide what you're asking him for? That's a different level of trust. But can I remind you that he can? Whatever it is that you seek, whatever it is that you need, you can find it in him. Father God, we thank you. We thank you for this opportunity to wake up on this side of heaven. We thank you for life, health, and strength. We, like, we thank you for breath in our lungs. God, as we continue to move through this day, through this month, through this year, we surrender to you. We give you every burden, every question. We bring you every problem because we know that the solution is found in you. Father, for those who are working out the discipline of fasting. I pray that you strengthen them. I pray that you meet them at every point of need. I pray that everything that's been lifted before you, every question, every prayer request, God, that you speak to their hearts as only you can. I pray, God, that you confirm your word for them. I pray that they have the heart to receive your yes, your no, or your not yet. I pray, God, for everybody who is seeking you, that you as your word says, when we seek you, you draw near to us. You said that you would make us a fisher of men. God, that others would know that you are good, that you are a good father, that we can bring requests to you because there's no lack in you. 
because you own the cat of a thousand hills. If there's a request, God, you already have a solution for it. God, we thank you for the man of God that will bring the word today. The word of community. God, that we, we will be reminded that number one, we are the hands and feet of Christ. That two, that you comfort us so that we can comfort others. And that three, that we remember the security, the comfort, and the safety that comes in godly community. We thank you for the man of God who has poured over this word that you have poured into him. God, that you will continue to refill him and refresh him for his assignment with us today. That you will continue to wrap your loving arms around our first family as they continue to pray for us. And God, as we leave this place, but never from your presence, we continue to pray to go and do and be hearers of your most holy word. Prepare our hearts even now as we continue in worship. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Yes, 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 yes. Let's just worship the Lord this morning. Let's give our hearts out. Let's give our best worship to him this morning because he deserves it. Amen. Who knows that God is our strength. He's our hope. He's our might. We could trust and rest on him and know that when we're weak, he makes us strong. And it's not by our strength alone. But when we humble ourselves and we pray and we really seek after his face, he's there to be our strength. And he wants to be that for you. He doesn't want to leave you by yourself or by your side, by yourself, but he wants to be by your side. He wants to be your comforter and your friend this morning. So if that's you this morning, I just encourage you just to Dig deep in worship this morning. He wants to be close to you. Oh, you want to be close, Jesus. You are my strength. Strength like no other. Strength like no other. It reaches to me. You are my strength, strength like no other, strength like no other, reaches to me. In the fullness of your grace, in the power of your name, you lift me up, you lift me up, come on, in the fullness, in the fullness of your grace, in the power of your name, you lift me up. Oh, you lift me up. You are my strength. You are my strength. Strength like no other. Your strength like no other. Cause it reaches. You are my hope, yeah. You are my hope. Your hope like no other God. Yeah. Come on, he keeps your hope. Just trust in him. Hope like no other. We trust in you, Jesus. Because it reaches to me. Come on. In the fullness, in the fullness.
God be your strength this morning. Strength like no other. Strength like no other. Strength like no other. Cause he reaches to me. Yes, God. Cause you are my hope. You are my hope. Hope like no other, Jesus. Yes, God. Hope like no other, Lord. morning go by without calling out to him strength and life Jesus you're my strength yes Lord strength like no other cause it reaches reaches come on I'm fairly loved I'm fairly loved stronger than mountains stronger Deeper than oceans, and it reaches. We're gonna say that one more time, cause we need to know. I'm fairly love, yeah. Stronger than mountains, God. Yes, God. Your love is deeper than the oceans. Oh God. Cause it reaches to me, reaches to me. Oh, your love reaches to us, God. Oh, your love reaches to us, God. Oh, your love follow us, oh God. You engulf us in your love, oh God. You are loving and kind, oh God, yeah. No matter where you're at, no matter what you're going through, God's love reaches towards us. 
His love draws deep. He doesn't care about what you've done yesterday, but his love is still the same. It's in his nature. Amen. It's in his nature to continually love and show his compassion and his kindness. It's in his nature. That's who God is. We don't have to make up in our mind who God is. It says it in his word. And his word is true. And his word is unfailing. It's what his word says. So God, we trust in you. Yes, Lord, we exalt your name above all others, Lord God. Worthy is your name. Jesus. This week I was reading in our devotional and it was about for the fast and it was talking about that Jesus' name has authority. Jesus' name has authority and has authority to save. It has authority to knock off of those strongholds. It has authority to heal the sick. His name has authority. If we could just live in that authority, come on, man. You know how victorious we will be. Just walk in that authority. Oh, yes. So this morning, I just want you to just right now to say the name Jesus. His name has power. It's Jesus. Jesus. Yes, Lord. We exalt you above every name, Jesus. Oh, there's no other name. Oh, Jesus. There's no other name but the name of Jesus. Oh, oh, yeah. Listen. I will exalt you. Yes, Jesus. I will exalt you. I will exalt you. You are my. I will exalt you. I will exalt you. Oh, I will exalt you. I am lifted up. I will exalt you. For you are my God. My hiding place. My safe, my safe refuge, my treasure, Lord, you are. Cause my friend and king, anointed one, most holy. Oh, my hiding place, my hiding, my safe refuge, my treasure. Yes, God. Because you're my friend and king. Anointed one. Because you're most holy. Because you're most holy. Come on, I will exalt you. I will exalt you. Hey, I will exalt you. Yes, Jesus. In the name above all names, I will. For you are my God.
that God is with them. Come on now. Because you're with me. Because you're with me. I will not fear. I will not fear. Come on. Because you're with me. Oh, because you're with me, God. Because you're with me, I will not fear. I will not. Come on, let's just end it all right here. you. He's with you at all times. Because you're with me, I will not fear. I will not fear. Because you're with me, yeah. No matter what I go through, he's with me. In sickness and health, he's still with me, yeah. Oh, I will not fear, I will not fear, because you're Come on, y'all sing that. Because you're I will not fear. With all that's going in the world, we can say this firmly. Because you're with me. With all that's going on. Because you're with me. He's promised to never leave us nor forsake us. Because you're with me. I will not Let's give the Lord a hand clap of praise for his presence is here. So grateful that he is here. At this time, we want to dismiss our teenagers. If you can go ahead and be dismissed at this moment. Uh, if it's your first time here, our teens gather together every Sunday at 11 o'clock. So uh, thank you for bringing your teens out. we got a lot of teens. Wow, look at that. Uh, Y'all be praying for them as they go out and get the word, amen. That's our future right there, amen. All right. If you could turn with me in your Bibles to Hebrews chapter 10, and we'll start in verse 19, go all the way through 25. When you get there, please say amen. It'll also be on the screen for you. If you got your Bible apps, you can get there pretty fast. Amen. So I hope all of you all are there. When you get there, say amen. All right. And it reads, starting in verse 19, chapter 10. Therefore, brothers and sisters, 
since we have boldness to enter the sanctuary through the blood of Jesus. He has inaugurated for us a new and living way through the curtain that is through his flesh. And since we have a great high priest over the house of God, verse 22, there's a couple of let us. Let us draw near with a true heart and full assurance of faith and with our hearts sprinkled clean from an evil conscience and our bodies washed in pure water. Verse 23, let us hold on to the confession of our hope without wavering since he who promised is faithful. And here's the last let us. And we're going to focus and narrow in on this today in our scripture. And let us consider one another in order to provoke love and good works, not neglecting to gather together as some are in a habit of doing, but encouraging each other and all the more as you see the day approaching. The title of this sermon is called Rooted in community rooted in community let's bow for a word of prayer father we thank you god for your word father it is your word that does the work it's not me so father this this moment god uh, allow me to decrease and you to increase strengthen me give me the strength i need to deliver this message but father rest on the hearts of your people that they may hear the word And be doers of the word, not just hearers, deceiving themselves. So, Father, we love you. It is in Jesus' name we pray this prayer. Amen. You all may be seated. Church, you may may have heard or maybe you have said once in your lifetime, or maybe you've heard a friend say, I don't need to go to church to grow in my relationship with God that I can grow in my relationship with God at home all by my, me and God, we got something personal. I'm going to join my membership of Bedside Baptist Church, amen, and I'm going to just go to church there. That, that, that's just between me and God. And many of us, uh, we may have said that once in our life, and we've proven it through life that we cannot do life by ourselves, But biblically, that is so inaccurate that we cannot grow in our relationship with God by ourselves. Yes, it's a vertical thing that God is doing, but we we also know that God is doing a horizontal thing uh, between our brethren and our neighbors and how God is bringing a body together for us to grow in and reflect his image in him. So the the myth is, is up. You do need people. Uh, And we prove this physically. You cannot uh, even, uh, we're interdependent as a society, and it's getting real cold outside, amen? And we neglect the fact that many, many years ago, before uh, 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 housing and central communities, what did people do when it got cold, right? Uh, Could you imagine being by yourself and, and, and not having anywhere to have your family something to eat? See, it's tough for you to visualize because you're thinking like, man, I go to my GE refrigerator, I go to my GE stove, and I cook something to eat. But you needed community back then to be able to survive in life. And this concept is somehow being lost because now we have a fence. And now we think we don't need other people. But this is so far from the truth. We need each other. We are interdependent that I need you, you need me, we need each other to make it in this life. And this is how we see what we call the church, which is a Christian community. And I want to challenge you today to get plugged into the church, get plugged into God's body, God's bride, which is the church, uh, the local church. So from the beginning, uh, God has always been calling people towards him into a community. Uh, He created Adam and Eve, and he said uh, them to be what? Be fruitful and what? Multiply. In fact, he told Adam, say, listen, Adam, I've looked at you, and you're going to need some help. So it is not good for a man to be alone. So he created Eve and told them to be fruitful and multiply in his image. God was creating a community. Then all of a sudden, man, we 
um, did what men do after the fall. We kept sinning. And through, uh, through Genesis 9, God was looking at the world like, man, what in the world did I create? So he saved Noah and his family and flooded the earth and saved Noah and his family. And once they made it their way, God told them to be fruitful and to multiply, God creating his community. But then we see Abraham. He told Abraham that I will make you a father of what? Many nations. Father Abraham. Y'all y'all did vacation Bible school, man. That's what y'all thought. Y'all said when y'all heard Abraham. But he called Abraham to be a father of many nations. Uh, and he, uh, God was creating a Christian community, people who will follow him. Um, and then we see Moses, Moses freeing the people of Israel from uh, Egyptian uh, slavery and bondage taking them to the promised land. Uh, Moses didn't get there. Joshua ended up getting them there. But God was all about creating a Christian community. Through the Israelites, right, through the people of Israel, which the lineage of David, and that's how we got Jesus, okay? So Jesus comes on the scene, and then Jesus tells Peter, upon this rock I will build my what? Community. Study your Bible. God is all about calling Christian people together to assemble, uh, to be like-minded, to share, to, to be integrated. Because you can't live this life by yourself. I don't know how good you are. I know you went to college at this school and you got your, your master's degree. You know, some of you got PhDs, but you cannot live life by yourself. And this is why God has called us to a community. Tony Evans uh, said this. He says, connecting to a vibrant, biblically-based, loving church is a critical tool that can steer us away from disobedience so that we can avert sins, consequences, and avoid di divine discipline. Believers who are not functioning part of the local church are living outside of God's will for their lives and limiting the power of, of God in their lives. So when he says functioning, right? I want to, there's two, two parts. Some of you are not a part of a local church, but some of you are in the church, but you're not of the church. Let me say this. Nobody knows your name. Nobody knows your pain. Nobody knows what you're going through. And if you are at that moment in your church lifestyle, listen here, because I know we get hurt. We get church hurt, and so-and-so so, so at this church did this to you, and I, I'm very sensitive to that, right? Or maybe a pastor did something to you in the past. But church, there's so much freedom in being vulnerable with someone who serves the same God that you serve. Let's say, listen here, I don't have it all together. Right now, my marriage is struggling, brother. I need someone to help me walk through this. That's what we get when we get into community, not uh, you know, we, we come in and we, we, we go out. Now, that's okay if you want to do that. I know that, that, that happens. But people need to know your name and know your issues. Because we'll, we'll, we'll talk about it later, how God sends people to the body, body to build you up, to build you up, to grow you up into who God has called you to be. So you need the church. Look at your neighbor and say, you need the church. You need the church. Look at the early church. Uh, Acts, uh, I love their model here, Acts 2. It says, they devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching, to the, the fellowship, and to the breaking of bread, and to the prayers. I love this. They were together. They, they were a, a, a great model of what a church should be. And I love the uh, chili and gumbo cook-off that we had. Wasn't that awesome last Sunday? Did y'all stay for that? Okay. It was phenomenal. But just to see people staying around and talking, you know, we found out, oh, you're part of this fraternity. Oh, you're part of this. And, and, and the fellowship, that's where the power is, not just sitting in the seats. The power is in the fellowship of people knowing you, knowing your name, knowing your background. That's where the power is. This word fellowship uh, uh, in the Greek is koinonia which means partnership and participation, that God is calling you to be more than just a seat warmer. Do you hear me? He is calling you more than just being a seat warmer. He's calling you 
to be integral part of people's lives and to use your spiritual gift to conform them into God's image. So listen, we need each other. Deep connection is what we're after here in the church. So here we pull up on our focal text today, Hebrews 10, 19, where the writer, the writer's unknown, the writer is basically saying, listen here, right? Jesus is the high priest. Before the Old Testament and the old way of how we had to bring our sacrifices to the high priest, and the high priest was the only person who had access to God, what the writer is saying in verses 19 through 23 is that Jesus, through his uh, price that he paid on the cross with his blood, now gives us, listen to this, the confidence to approach the holy places. That we now, this is what the beautiful thing about Christianity, we now have access to God because of Jesus. That's what Christianity is about. We have access to God because of Christ. So this is what unifies us as a family, that once you accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior and you believe in him, God is then calling you into a family to live out your faith together. Okay? So this is what uh, the, the writer, he summarized. Listen here, we, uh, through the blood of Jesus, we now have access and we need to approach God with boldness. He was encouraging people that, listen, you don't have to come uh, not guessing if God hears you. You need to come knowing God hears you because of the work, because of the finished work of what Jesus did on the cross, now you can approach him with both. Somebody need to rejoice because of that. That, is, that, is, that does my heart good. Okay? But here are some benefits of being connected to a church. And I want you to write these things down. There are three benefits to being connected to a local church. The first benefit is accountability. Accountability. Look at what the writer says here. And let us consider one another in order to provoke love and good works. You need other people to challenge you and to make you better. Not a legalistic challenge, right? Where we're not taking the speck out of our eye, right? It's a challenge to say, hey, listen here, I'm following the same God that you're following and I just want you to be a better man. I want you to be a better father. I want you to be a better spouse. I want you to be a, be a, a better person in your community. It's a healthy challenge. And the word consider here means a strong, intense pondering. That the writer is calling us to us for us to think about ways that we can be a light and stir people up to love people and to do good works. I love uh, two of the greatest coaches ever to live. Uh, I have both gone to see, and we're in within, 20, within 24 hours, Bill Belichick, one of the greatest coaches ever to coach in the NFL, right? Um, and Nick Saban, one of the greatest college coaches ever to live. They're both going to, it, it was just a moment. I, my sure was like, what are you crying for? I, I wasn't crying. But it was an emotional day for me, Right? Uh, because it was just so momentous to see these great figures both go on their separate ways. But both of them are known for their standard of excellence. That when you came in as a B player, you left an A player. That when you walked through the door, you saw the, the standards they had, and they brought you up, didn't bring you down. That is what the church does, Okay that we are to be a body that is focused on growing in our relationship with God, and our goal is to bring you up, not to bring you down. We are to challenge each other to be better. And this is one of the reasons why the enemy works on people who have fallen out of going to, re to uh, weekly gatherings or gathering with the church because they've probably fallen into a life of sin. Okay? Right? And what the enemy does is he says, listen here, this is what the enemy does. You're the only person who sins, right? Don't go in front of them in church, folk, because they're just going to judge you, amen. Tell them, have y'all been there? Well, you think that. And that's the way the enemy works on your, on, on your mind. But he keeps the person isolated because there's power in community. 
that if a person would come to the body, as a scripture, we would restore them. We would encourage them. We would give them the tools. We would give them the encouragement they need to make it through what they are going through. So in the church, we have a standard of a God standard where we are holding each other accountable and conforming each other to the image of God. I like how the writer uses this word. He says, we need to stir up. Some of your versions say stir up uh, love and good works. Some versions say provoke. Provoke means to stimulate or to give rise. Don't ever minimize, you who are leaders in your life, don't minimize the power of just being an example. Of being an example. Being, uh, yes, you can say a lot of things, but I want you also to do a lot of things. The power of just being a, a, a right standing man, a right standing woman before God, that people see that. And it is contagious, and it, it makes each one of us better. The writer uses two things, stir up love and good works. That's the Christian faith right there, love, right? Jesus says, you can identify my disciples by those that what? Love, not those that quote scripture, not those that uh, have the religious things, but those who love people. That is how you should identify my disciples, we need to have a certain character about ourselves where we're stirring up, man, this is how you need to love your wife. This is how you need to love your coworker. This is how you need to love your enemies, okay? Because that's what the central theme is of being a disciple. But also it says love and good works. Uh, if you turn in your Bibles to Matthew 5 and look at verse, let's go to verse 14. We know you're the salt of the earth, but if the salt loses its taste, how can it be made salty? Verse 14 says, you are the what? You're the light of the world. A city situated on a hill that cannot be hidden. No one lights a lamp and puts it under a basket, but rather on a lampstand. And it gives light to all who are in the house. In the same way, look at this, church, because many of you are, what are good works? Let your light shine before others so that they may see your good works and give glory to Father in heaven. That when you talk about accountability, that when you come into the place of worship, we should be stirring up you to do good works. We should be stirring up for you to be a light in a dark place. We should be stirring up for you to go out to this dark world and proclaim who God is. Martin Luther King Day is coming on Monday, and just what a light. And many of us forget that the, the Civil Rights Movement was a gospel-centered movement that was organized in the church, in the church, where they got encouraged to go out to a community that didn't receive them, didn't love them, and to be a light. That's what we need to be in our world, and encouragement comes through being together. Church Proverbs 27, 17 says, iron sharpens what? Iron, iron. Iron sharpens iron. I need you to sharpen me to make me better and more acceptable to God. Amen? Number two, not only this is an accountability that you get by being a part of the church. Here's another benefit. Accessibility. Look at what the writer says. Not neglecting to gather together as some are in the habit of doing. I like how uh, he implores us that you need to meet with your Christian family regularly. Nobody grows in a relationship by meeting infrequently. Nobody. Okay? Men, I'm hoping that you're loving your wife daily, not just waiting for Valentine's Day. If you wait for Valentine's, it's going to be too late, brothers. You need to be loving her daily and pursuing her daily. Because you can't pull out what you don't put in. And when it comes to gathering together frequently and, and meeting together, people get to know you and they get to feel comfortable because when you first know somebody, you just ain't going to come and just share all your problems. I just met you, sister so-and-so. Oh, I know your name, but 
I just met you. I ain't going to share all my problems, all my issues. But it's through sharing your problems and your issues, that's where the transformation happens. So what happens is when we're not known, when we're not uh, in, truly rooted and plugged in, we're robbing ourselves of the transformation that happens by being rooted in community. That people need to know the good, the bad, right? So that they can be able to help us. I like how he says, have some have fallen into the habit of doing. Uh, COVID was a, a uh, during that season, even me as your, as, your, uh, as your pastor, man, I fell into the habit. I was like, man, it's pretty, it's pretty nice watching service from your, from your pajamas, amen? This is pretty cool, right? And I would record a sermon and, uh, you know, then go watch it on Sunday. And I was like, oh, okay, this is, this is pretty cool. We went out, walked in the morning and came and watched it and went right back. I said, this is pretty cool. But what was hard was the habit it developed of not meeting regularly in person. It was hard to break that, right? Even some of the pastor, now what time we got to come back and volunteer, pastor? Now, come on. We enjoyed COVID season, amen. That was a good season. But it's habits. But just as you can develop negative habits, you can also develop positive habits, okay? That you need to develop the habit of coming to worship frequently, regularly, when you don't feel like it. Right? When you're tired. Oh, the kids, you know, I got to wake up kids too in the morning. Your kids don't want to get up and get dressed and your son put his shirt on and it's backwards. Right? And then you're walking out the door and you, did you brush your teeth? No, Dad. Oh, Lord. It's tough. I use this example of, of me going to the gym. How many of you are, are to the gym people? Okay. I can't work out by myself at home, right? I, I just got to see people. I've got to see just everybody, just same purpose, same focus, everybody working towards a common goal, okay? It just, it just encourages me to keep, to keep going, right? That's what we need to think about when it comes to, to worship. But I also see... You know, brother, you know, lifting weights. I'm like, man, that brother's strong. I need to step my game up, right? And there's a healthy challenge that comes there, me wanting to, to be a better man, be a better father. But if you don't go, you don't grow. Many of us want results in the gym, and we're infrequent. We go once a month, and then we look at them and like, okay. Well, what's going on? Okay? You have to develop a habit. Listen to this. Of going, and after you go consistently, you will see growth. Same way that happens in, in, in worship. That I'm just going to challenge you all to be on the point of vulnerability. It's going to feel awkward. Okay? Especially you introverts. I got to work on you introverts. Amen. How many introverts? Lord, okay. It's okay. We, God loves you too. Amen. But just start with a, 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 what is your name? Where are you from? Okay, well, I'm from here. I'm from here. Connection, bonding, and then it steps. Good. I met so many good people. Did you know good people can come from Louisiana? I didn't know that. Okay. <laughs> I'm sorry. My bad. I'm sorry. I love y'all. Amen. Remember, it's the bank account, okay? What you get in, whatever you put in is what you can pull out. You really need help when you're going through a rough season, okay? We all go through it. Health failing, loss of loved one, loss of job, marriage challenge, struggling mentally, just there, we need help. And in the gym, one thing I appreciate about the gym is when I, every once in a while when I get crazy and I'm, that testosterone's moving, I start throwing weight on there. No, I can't lift it. And then I look over to the brother, hey, hey man, can, can, can you spot me? 
because I, I know that I'm just going to get to five and then I'm going to just die. Can you spot me? Because a lot of us, when you're lifting heavy weight, you can't lift heavy weight by yourself. And when you try to lift heavy weight by yourself, it leads to injury, permanent damage. And with the church, God has put the church here as a body to help you to lift the weight. To help you lift it, to help you get through what you're, what you're going through in your life. Also, church, in this house, we have engineers. We have teachers. We have chefs. We have uh, uh, salespeople. We have everything in this house. We have everybody. If you need a job, it's, we have people who can hire you in the house. If nobody knows your name, you're not connected. There's nothing to draw from. So there's power in sharing that. Not only do you need it for accessibility, church, but the last one you need the church for is for ability. Let me explain this. Look, what, look at, let me help you see it in the text. Okay. He says, not neglecting to gather as some are in the habit of doing, but, listen to this, encouraging each other. It's a key word, encouraging each other. And if you look at some of Paul's letters, he always closed his letters with a encouragement. Wow. Why? Life is so hard. Life is so unfair. That sometimes you can get to a point in this Christian walk where you're ready to throw in the towel. You're ready to give up. You're ready to grow weary, as the scripture, grow weary in well-doing. That you've been following the Lord, and then this happens. In this day, here's what we don't take advantage of in this day. They were dealing with persecution. Let me tell you Christians now, because a lot of you all are saved, but you're not facing persecution. In this world, persecution is going to come to Christians. Trust me. Look at the, where the world's going. It's now gonna, it's gonna become unpopular and to be a Christian. Right now, Christian's normative. But it's gonna come a time when it's not gonna be popular to be a Christian. Okay? So what they were getting encouraged from is listen here, they they getting their heads chopped off, you know, uh, stone, right? And we mad because somebody take down our Facebook post, amen. Talk about persecution, okay? Now, I'm not minimizing what you have gone through. We all persecuted in different manners, right? I can't pray at work, okay? That's, they were getting killed, stoned, thrown because of what they believed. So they needed the church, come on, for encouragement. It's one of the primary fundamental things that you need the body for, to encourage you. Keep going. Keep serving. Keep praising. Keep loving your wife. Yeah, I know y'all going through it. It's going to be all right. You're going to get through it. You lost a loved one. Man, brother, listen here. I just lost my mother. That's how sharing goes, okay? And it's the power, right? I remember when, because you don't know who's been through what you've been through. And when you start sharing the power of the Holy Spirit, you'll find they have been through exactly what I've been through. Okay? So you need the church to encourage you, to tell you, hey, keep going. It's going to get rough, but keep going. Yes, the world looks like it's going to hell, but it, keep going. Keep going. You need encouragement. Let me get this picture for you all. Uh, put that picture up here. I want to get a picture of encouragement. And Parents, you know encouragement, okay? When you're out there with your children, they're playing sports, and they getting beat, beat, just beat, just stomped on. <laughs> it's 50 to zero. And the parent's like, good job, Johnny. 
You're doing great. You're doing good. And you're like, man, we got to. <laughs> I don't think football is sport. <laughs> Parents, we know encouragement. But as I was watching the games, I saw the cheerleaders, okay? And one thing I love about the cheerleaders is no matter the score, <laughs> give me an A, <laughs> 50 to zero, getting beat, down. But they're still cheering. They're still encouraging. And that's the picture of what God wants the church to be. That no matter what you're going through, rough season, good season, dark season, cloudy season, you've got a cheerleading ministry within the church. God's got a plan for you. God's going to work it out. Everything is going to work out according to his plan. Because he loves you. He cares for you. He died for you. Listen, I'm going through it myself. But child, you can get through it. I've been through a lot myself. But child, you can get through it. We need to have a church that is encouraging. Now church, I want y'all to do this. Okay, I know we're in a, and I'm going to do some challenging here. Some, some challenging. I want you, I don't know, you don't know what your neighbors go through, but I want you to speak a word of encouragement. Right now, look at your neighbor and I want you just to encourage them. Just encourage them. Just encourage them. Come on, just encourage them. Encourage them. It's going to be all right. It's going to be okay. God's going to do it. God's going to do it. He's got a plan for you. You'll make it again. He's got the resources. You're going to be all right. Come on now. It's going to be all right. It's going to be all right. The Cowboys going to win today. Hey, the Cowboys going to the Super Bowl. <laughs> Where's my encouragement? <laughs> Woo. Church, that's what we need. We need encouragement. And that comes when you're rooted in community. Our prayer team to come forward. Maybe head bowed, maybe not closed. Just want to offer an invitation twofold. Number one, you may not have a relationship with Jesus Christ, if you die today, you cannot with a surety say you're going to spend eternity in heaven. The invitation is to you for you to accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. As the word said, Jesus came and paid the penalty for your sin. So all you have to do is turn away from your sin, confess with your mouth, believe in your heart that Jesus died on the cross for your sin. And you will spend eternity with him. That's the first prayer. But number two, maybe you just need some encouragement. You need to touch and agree with somebody. You want to pray with somebody. Listen, this is what the church is for. So at this moment, as we're singing, I want you to just take a step of faith. Come forward, join hands. And someone's going to pray with you, man. Self away, oh, I give myself away so you can use me. I give myself away. Oh, I give myself away 
Pastor, for reminding us about the importance of community. I think that's something we can all take away, tuck in our heart to meditate on, meditate on later. It's giving time, church. We can get excited about giving time. The baskets are being passed here in the sanctuary. If you are tech savvy, you can also text any amount to 84321. Or you can give on our website at yourimagechurch.com. If you're a first time visitor today, we invite you to fill out a connection card. Just a reminder, you can place them in the two black boxes in the foyer. Every Wednesday, church say every Wednesday, we have prayer call at 8 p.m. I do hope that you've been joining us on the prayer calls and that they have been blessing you. And we are continuing with the Daniel fast. Continuing. If you want to join, you can join us this week. Amen. If you are made a decision and you're interested in joining the Image Church family, our new member orientation is next week. You can scan the QR code to register. Our next up teens, we saw all of them go to service today. They are in week three of their five week series called Your New Playlist, a student's guide to tapping into the superpower of mindset. They meet every week at the 11 o'clock service. Thank you parents for making sure that your teens are available for teen church. End of year giving statements will be available at the end of this month. Please make sure that your mailing address is up to date in the Church Center app by January the 20th. Where are the merry folks? Well, praise the Lord. I see y'all. I see y'all. Y'all are deep in here today. Hello, merry couples. Uh, the marriage life group will start again on January the 18th. And they will meet on the first and third Thursday of every month via Zoom. You can sign up in the Church Center app. Image is also launching our Divorce Care Ministry on February the 7th. Divorce Care is a 13-week support group that helps you heal from the pain of separation or divorce. And you can scan the QR code to register. And as always, all of our events can be found on the Church Center app. Thank you. All right. Thank you, Donia. We want to uh, announce the winners. We did this at 9 o'clock. We want to announce the winners of the chili and gumbo cook-off. So all the chili winners were at the early service. So we want to give them their credit. They already got their spoon. But the uh, first place, uh, uh, third place, went to Giovanna. Uh, she had the chili that you were patting your head spicy. That was good. Third place. Uh, second went to Carl Cullens. Y'all give it up for her baby. You look at her baby. Oh, that's my baby. All right. And then first place went to Brother John Taylor. 
uh, he was here. And Brother John Taylor had to spend a whole year knowing he lost last year. So he went to cooking class. I don't know what he did. Cooking classes. I don't know what he did, Brother Jabot, but he worked on it and he won this year. But we're going to have that every year uh, for us for the chili. Now, the gumbo. Here's a. This was crazy about the gumbo. We need some more gumbo participants, but we had two phenomenal gumbo participants. And check this out. Of all the gumbo participants, we had a lot of tallies. It was a tie right down the middle. Isn't that crazy? So the Robinettes, y'all were tied with Miss Mary Martin, split right down the middle. So that's a good thing. Uh, had two good uh, contestants, but next year, I'm throwing my name in the hat, y'all. I'm going to make y'all my gumbo. My gumbo, right? Y'all want it? Okay, all right, we'll see. And speaking of that, guys, we um, are in the middle of our fasting and prayer. Uh, Minister and Donnie mentioned it. Guys, if you've started late, it's okay. Some of us, if you've fallen out a day, if you had a weak moment and went to Chick-fil-A and ordered the number one, amen, okay, with the lemonade, upsize the fry, now, you got to get Polynesian sauce. I don't know what they do in that, but the Holy Spirit is in that Polynesian sauce now. Dip them fries in the pot. Come on. <laughs> Go. Woo. Okay. We fasting. Let me get back on. Okay. We fasting. Woo. We got two more weeks left. <laughs> okay. <laughs> But just try it. Start. Uh, this is not meant to be, be a I'm better than you contest. We're here to grow in our relationship with God. We're doing the Bible app once a day. They have a guided scripture and a devotion in the Bible app every day. It is phenomenal. I encourage you to participate uh, as we uh, continue our days of 21 days of prayer and fasting. Amen. Uh, church, let's stand and be dismissed. Father, we thank you for your word. Thank you for experiencing you today. Father, as we leave this place, let us, let us never leave from your presence. Father, as we partake, I pray that we get rooted in community, that people know our name and they know our pain, and that we can grow in Christ together. God, we love you. It is in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. You are dismissed, church.